Okay, in this section here we're going to be finding the derivative of an inverse function and actually we're going to be evaluating it at a point. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw up a picture for us to look at and put a dotted line here. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to draw a picture and we're going to label this as our function f of x and then we'll give this a darker color, some different color and we're going to label this as our inverse. Okay, So this line here is f of x and this line Here is f inverse of x, the inverse. So when we're talking about taking the derivative, um, first off, on some interval here, it must be the uh, continuous. Our function has to be continuous and it must be differentiable at uh, every point. And also that f must have an inverse. Okay, f must have an inverse. All right. Let's say that. Uh, I pick um, a number here on the x-axis, we'll call it A, and we'll call this B. So in other words, F of A is equal to B. And I'll write that as an ordered pair over here, A, B. And so F inverse of B B should equal A. Okay, that's what it means to be uh, the inverse, and then B, A. Okay, so in other words, I plug in F of inverse, which is going to be this function here, and it's supposed to be a perpendicular line to the dotted line. Okay, so if I were to plug in B, which is about right here, let's say. Okay. And then we would get out A. Now here's the interesting thing. If I took the derivative of F and I were to plug A in, we're going to say that the slope of that tangent line is equal to M. Okay. So that would be the tangent line if we're going to draw a picture to this thing. The derivative would be equal to m. Now what's interesting here, that's supposed to be a tangent line, it's not a very good one. Uh, this guy here, the other tangent line, all right, what would this slope of this tangent line be? Well it turns out that the derivative of the inverse, and of course we'd be plugging b in right here, would be 1 over m. That's right. So all you have to do is find m and then just take its reciprocal and you have now found the derivative of the inverse at b. So the idea here is, is they're going to be giving us b. We need to find a. Once we find a we can take the derivative of the function they're going to give us and get out m and then we just take the reciprocal. Okay, they're going to give us b. We're going to have to find a. Plug a in the derivative. Get the deriv get the get the derivative, um, and then take the reciprocal. That's all we have to do. All right. But the but the tricky part here is is figuring out what is a going to be. Okay, what is that number? That's going to be the tricky part right there. Once we get this number, then the rest of it's easy to do. All right. Okay, so this is going to be the first uh, example that we look at. So we're given this function f of x, and we're asked to find f inverse, right, the derivative, that's what this little prime means, the derivative of the inverse of 2. In other words, what number can I plug into this that gives me 2 out? So that's what we need to look for. So I'm going to say that uh, 
2 is equal to x cubed plus 2x minus 1. Alright, and we're just going to kind of do a trial here. I'm going to start with 1. We're going to let, um, let x equal 1. Okay, so 1 plus 2 times 1 is 3, and 3 minus 1 is 2. So that's right, x is equal to 1 is going to be one of them. So in other words, if I were to write this as an ordered pair, well, first off, we'd say f of 1 is equal to 2. Then I'm going to write it as an ordered pair. 1, put 1 in, get 2 out. Now remember on the inverse, plugging 2 in, we should get 1 out. Okay. Plugging 2 in, we should get 1 out. Of course, we write that as an ordered pair 2, 1 here. So that's what we want to do. We, we want to now take the derivative of f of x. You have to remember what we just talked about in that picture that I just drew. So we want to take the derivative of f of x, which is 3x squared plus 2. The 1 is what we were looking for. We're going to plug that in. 3 times 1 squared is 3. I guess I won't skip any steps on that. So we end up with 5. So the slope at 1 is 5, or we should just say the derivative evaluated at 1 is equal to 5. Now remember what f inverse of the derivative, right, the derivative of f inverse of 2 is equal to, it was the reciprocal of 5. So it is just 1 over 5. So it's that easy. So the idea here is the trick is going to be is finding what x is. And once you do that, you just take the derivative of the function they give us, plug that number in, and then take its reciprocal, and you're done. That's simple. Okay. All right. Let's look at another one here. f of x is equal to 1 over... 27 x to the fifth plus 2x cubed. Alright, and we want to find the derivative of the inverse at negative 11. So I'm going to tell you that uh, I had to plug some numbers in to get this. Uh, to get this right and it turns out if you plug in negative 3 into this you get negative 11 out. Okay, So 1 over 27 negative 3 to the fifth I had to you know start plugging numbers in to get this and so plugging negative 3 into this this is all equal to negative 11. So we take the derivative of what we've got up here, so that would be f prime of x is equal to, we'll say 1 over 27, 5x to the fourth plus 6x squared, and then of course we want now to plug in our negative 3, so f prime of negative 3 times negative 3 to the 4th plus 6 times negative 3 um, squared. Yeah. And that is going to be equal to 17. So this guy right here is going to be 1 over 17. Okay, um, right, so this is equal to 1 over 17. Sorry, I got sloppy there on that. but uh, So remember, the key is is defining that number that I need to plug into right here to get us negative 11 out. All right, and then all we have to do is just take the derivative, plug that number in, 
and take the reciprocal of whatever this number is. Okay. All right, one more example on this. Let's say we have f of x is equal to x cubed minus 4 over x and we want to find f we want to find the derivative of the inverse and evaluate it at 6 all right so in other words what number do I need to plug into this thing in order to get 6 out so I go through and you know I plug 0 okay can't use 0 plug 1 in um, it's not going to be 1 plug 2 in 2 cubed is 8 2 down here 2 goes into uh, 4 2 times and 8 minus 2 is 6 so x is equal to 2 alright good so now what I'm going to do is take the derivative of this up here so I'm going to actually rewrite this bringing this x to the top and makes it negative 1. It's a whole lot easier than using the quotient rule. Okay, So we take the derivative, we have 3x squared plus 4x to the negative 2. So hopefully you're up on taking derivatives so I don't have to go step by step on that. Now what we're going to do is plug 2 into this so f prime 2 is equal to 3 times 2 squared plus, now this x to the negative 2 needs to go back down into the denominator so this becomes 2 squared down here and so we end up with f prime of 2 equals <coughs> 13 alright this should equal 13, let's see 2 squared is 4, that's going to be 3 times 4 is 12 that's 1 and 12 plus 1 is 13 so all we need to do now is um, the derivative at 6 so we know that it's the reciprocal of 13 which is going to be 1 over 13 that easy okay now let me just say something here real quick I remember when I was first doing these problems I'm thinking well here's an equation right here why don't we just solve for x in this problem okay well sometimes it's pretty difficult to actually solve for x in these equations so that's the reason we have to do this trial and error thing in other words plug a number in and see what it's equal to so normally they give you a number out here okay that's uh, where you know you're just gonna have to plug a few numbers in to actually figure out what this what you know try to get this to match six all right um, and also you know back in college algebra or high school algebra or whatever knowing how to find the actual inverse of this function remember you'd put x here and then y is here and you would solve for y well if you could do that and then take the derivative and plug 6 in well that would be great too but uh, that's kinda difficult okay and really the whole idea here is is knowing the relationship between the derivative of the function and the derivative of its inverse and its relationship is they're just reciprocals of each other they're just reciprocals their derivatives are reciprocals of each other here at a point okay so I think that's what we're usually trying to just get at. Okay. Well, I think that's it for examples. Hopefully you caught on and that helps you out on how to find the derivative of an inverse um, at a point. All right.